They say the West is posh, the East is poor, the North is intellectual and the South is rough. Of course, all these are generalizations and stereotypes, but the real question here is, which is the best area where to live in London? Hi everyone, it's your London friend Vasi and in today's video I'm going to answer this very commonly asked question, which honestly doesn't really have a right or wrong answer because it all depends on you. Yes, exactly, on you. Number 10. Camden Town. Well, I work in Camden and I have to tell you, it is definitely a great place for young professionals who are kind of looking for fun and vibrant area, don't really mind having uh, crowds or a lot of people, especially on a Friday night or on Saturday around the market. Plus, it's actually quite close to central London, so I would say it's pretty well connected as well. If you're wondering where the catch is, the catch in here comes with the price. If we look here at the map uh, of Zuplo, I haven't actually put any price range so you can see like in general for how much you can find a one-bedroom apartment within this area. You can see that the average apartment would go for at least 1700 to 800 per month but the good thing is that there's still some pretty pretty good options like this apartment that I found for 1500 which I would say it's quite nice. If you look for it, you can still find some pretty good deals. If you want to see more informative and cool videos from London or travel related content, don't forget to hit the subscribe bell button down below. Next we have Eastlington, which is not quite far from Camden and I think this would be also a great alternative for uh, young professionals because this area is not quite far from Old Street where you have quite a lot of offices and especially startups. Fun fact, do you know that Old Street is also sometimes called the Silicon Roundabout because of all the tech startups that are based in there. A great plus of this area is actually the fact that there are 10 underground stops all around the area. Actually, the price tag is not really any different from Camden, like maybe slightly cheaper, but not a lot. I think the average apartment would still be around 1,700. Yeah, if you're lucky enough, you might find like something for 1,600. Next up, we have Hackney. And if I have to describe Hackney, well, Basically, this is the area where the cool kids live. This is, it's trendy, it's hip, it's alternative, it's artsy. Personally, I wouldn't live in there because the underground options are quite limited. I mean, you still have the overground, which is quite efficient, but the underground options, yes, are not as good. But the fact that the underground options are limited hasn't stopped this place from growing. And in fact, it is one of the fastest growing areas in London. And actually, I tried looking and like doing our test to see how much would a one bedroom apartment cost in here. But from what I can see, it feels like most of the places in this area are already rented out because there weren't many options in here. We have Shoreditch and Hoxton. And I think this area would be perfect for you. First of all, if you like going out, you enjoy having a good nightlife. And if you're a little bit more hip, alternative and artsy, if you're definitely a foodie. Because in recent years, Shoreditch has been the place where a lot of new restaurants have been opening and it's uh, definitely a new trendy spot. It used to be more alternative, but at the moment it is definitely more on the commercial side. But I think one of the great things which has still remained from this area, it is the strong immigrant influence. Guys, if you watch my video about Brooklyn, you will actually see in there that there are streets where the signs are all in Bengali and haven't seen any anything like that in London. Moving a little bit more southeast, we have Peckham. So compared to Shoreditch, it is still 
trendy and slightly alternative but definitely more affordable first of all and it is uh, more upcoming it hasn't really become as famous and commercial compared to shortage which also means that it is more affordable and let's be honest this is what we love on this channel looking at supla everything in here seems to be under 1500 which is quite interesting because in all the areas where we were that we were looking at before everything was definitely on the upper side and i was trying to find this one or two apartments for you which were under 1700 and not far away from peckham it is my next suggestion for you which is brixton and there are quite a lot of young adults living here as well can you guess why yes you guessed this totally right it is because average prices here are lower compared to other areas in london here you can find like cute victorian victorian style houses pretty much like the ones in belgravia or notting hill but the price tag would be a lot lower you have the river which is close by plus there are quite a lot of markets where the prices are also lower compared to the ones in central london and my next suggestion for you it is called crystal palace which honestly before making this research i have never really considered it as the best area where to live in london but I read that according to the Sunday Times, which every year rate the best area where to live in London, it won for 2022. So I was like, oh, well, maybe I'm missing something in here. Until 2007, this area apparently was not desirable to live at all. But after that, when the overground was uh, introduced, it became a lot more accessible. And I would say for these prices, it should definitely be on your radar as well. Another great area which uh, families should consider, uh, it is Richmond. Actually, I'm pretty sure a lot of families can have already considered it because it's actually one of the most desirable places where to live in London. I wouldn't say that it is as budget friendly as uh, Crystal Palace for example. It has a lot of uh, nature and great parks around. I can see that for 1500 you can find pretty great deals and uh, you can have one of these cute Victorian houses with a garden in front. Moving to the extremely exclusive area of London, Kensington and Chelsea. Well, if you live in this place and of course like if you're a girl I think uh, most probably you're really fashionable, really follow trends, most probably you go to yoga, you drink a green juice, you're really skinny and low-key I want to be your friend but I'm also really embarrassed when I see you. Just because I want to show you how prestigious it really is, I actually found this place which for one month costs 26 thousand pounds which which it just gives me a headache thinking about it and I'm just wondering who has 26 thousand pounds per month to spend on a one bedroom flat you know a great reason to live in chelsea it is actually all the shops around there are quite a lot of uh, cafes a lot of parks it is pretty quiet there are a lot of museums as well and it is really well connected to central london as well if you live in chelsea you have pretty much already made it in life so congrats to you and the uh, number one prize for the best area where to live in london goes to pimlico i mean this is where i live and okay maybe i'm not being extremely objective in here but ever since i moved in pimlico i love this area so much that i'm not really even considering of moving this is how much i like it because it is very central you're also quite well connected because there is a pimlico underground station but there is also victoria station the prices here are still lower compared to the to the neighboring areas like belgravia or chelsea for example you guys please keep this between me and you Shh. ever since i moved in here in 2018 my contract hasn't really being updated so i'm still paying the same rent as in 2018 which is 1500 
and considering how much the other areas of London cost, I feel like this is steel. So please don't call my landlord. 